there. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five plus a bonus end of the year middle school math activities for you to use inside of your middle school math classroom. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. If you are quickly approaching the end of the school year and you are struggling with finding fun activities to do to get to the last day of school, you're in luck. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five with a special bonus activity um, for you to do, for you to use at the end of the school year. Really, you could use this anytime, but it works especially great this time of year, which is the end of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and let's get started. The first activity that I want to share with you I don't know why that's there, um, is doing a digital gallery walk. I love doing regular gallery walks in my middle school math class. However, in the world that we're in right now, where many of us are teaching virtually or in a hybrid situation, a digital gallery walk would be amazing. What is a gallery walk? Okay, let me explain. So you know when you go to a museum and there's all this art on the wall and you walk around and you take a look and you kind of take in all the information. That's exactly what this is, except math. So this is a, one art piece that one of my students created um, last year, all about decimals, percents, and fractions. So she created, you know, a piece of art based on one math count concept that we learned this year and we place it around the classroom or in our virtual classroom. So your students can do this on a piece of construction paper. They can do this on a Google slide, on a PowerPoint, really just creating a visual image, an artistic piece using one math concept. And you can assign the math concept. You can have students pick their own and then maybe you just confirm it so you don't have so many of the same concept. Um, I think this is a really great um, alternative for students, especially for our students who really um, are more artsy and less analytical, it really allows them to tap into their art brain. Item number two, if you are brave, allow your students to use social media. I know this is this may be a on a class by class basis, you might allow your period two to do this, but maybe not your period four, because you know the type of kids you have. However, so what do I mean by use social media? You know, our students have grown up in the social media age. They really cannot remember a time when there was no social media. So I love to use this to my advantage. I have students create TikTok videos or Instagram videos that's appropriate, um, where they can create songs or, or poems or any dances, anything that they want in terms of creativity, as long as it's appropriate, um, in re something related to math. So they could create a song about the distributive property. They can create a dance and a song to fractions, however they want to use this um, medium it, to be creative, to talk about math, to explore math. I'm all for it. But again, use this at your discretion, you know your students best. So you know the students where you're like, mm, this is not gonna work, but it might work for this class. So give it a try. <laughs> Number three, use online games. There are so many fun online games out there like Quizzes, Kahoot, Look It, um, Quizlet. There's so many things. This video is not gonna go into all of the things and how to use them, but I would highly recommend that you try. Um, my personal favorite is quizzes. It's totally free. And personally, what I love about it is that students can work at their own pace. I love Kahoot too, but um, you know, Kahoot for me personally, if a student works a little bit slower, Kahoot can be a struggle. So quizzes is my absolute favorite. It is Q-U-I-Z-Z-I-Z. -Z -Z. I have no affiliation. I just love it so much. Item number four, are we on four already? Yes, four, is doing an extreme school makeover project. What is that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what this is. So this is just an image. So I have my students create 
their own, if they were to redecorate the entire school, how would they create the school and what math vocabulary can they incorporate into their new design? So you can see here that this student created a pyramid, which is the gym. They created a Chick-fil-A. Okay, there's no, no real math <laughs> vocab here, but they have like a circle in, in the quad. They have an office, which is a dome. Rectangular prisms are their benches. Cubes are their, you know, the buildings. So this is just a very simple, um, this is a very simple drawing. I have had many students get very, very creative, um, but really doing, thinking about their own school, how could they use math vocabulary in, in creating in a makeover for their own school? Item number five, my probably my favorite item for my students to do at the end of the school year is to really reflect. Reflecting on our own selves is a really important exercise to do just as a human, I think, because I think we, you know, are at least for me, I'm always trying to figure out, OK, that lesson went well, that lesson didn't. What can I do better? What do I what did I like about it? And I think it's important for students to reflect upon their own school year. I like to have my students reflect upon their their school year specifically to my own math class. Like, what do they like about my math class? What did they learn? What could be better? Um, you know, stuff like that. And then also reflect upon the school year as a whole, like for them individually, like emotionally, um, physically, mentally, like what what went well this school year for them. And it's important for for me at least to have my students talk about and think about their successes for the school year as well as what could they have wanted to go better what could they what could they you know for them to think of them think about it themselves what could they have done better this year and what do they want out of themselves for next year as they move on so reflecting writing things down is really really powerful um and then also, if they want to share, I create a safe space for them to share their thoughts. They don't have to. I never force, you know, that upon my students at all. Um, but if they want to share, be open. I'm all for it. And reflecting this exercise is never something I grade. I give everyone who participates just points um, because, you know, like everyone's reflection and their experience is different and personal and unique. So I don't ever give a grade for this. Okay, and then our bonus activity, which is probably my favorite activity, is using this digital interactive, creating their own digital interactive board game. So I have my students, I group my students into four, if four, really no more than five or six, but four max. And I give them each a math concept. So if I have, if I have a group of students say, and I tell them, okay, you're going to do distributed property. They're going to create a whole board game all about distributed property. So they will go through, there are several, there there's four boards for them to choose from. Okay. So here's one board. Here's another board, here's a third board and a fourth board. So let's just say they chose this one. There is a spot for them to roll the dice and a spot for them to spin, okay? And then these, you cannot move the boards, but the game pieces are all movable. Now they are gonna go through and they are going to create their own questions. So let's just say they did two X minus one. And what I like to do is there are four sheets. So there's one, two, three, four. And that's why I have, I, I really like to group them in fours. One person will write the first four questions. The next will write the next four questions. The third will write the next third, you know, set of questions. And the, so each student will write four questions all about distributed property. Then once every group has completed all of their questions, we will play each other's games. And then, oh, and then don't forget, you want your students to make sure on a separate slide or a separate sheet of paper, they create the answer key. And so what each team will do, so let's just say they've created all the questions, 
now we're playing, you know, we're playing games. Everyone in the class has switched games. So now we will go through, okay, question one, we'll answer, we'll answer the question. If we get it right, we'll move, you know, however many spaces that the board, that the dice says, or the spinner says, however way you want to, you want the rules to be. But this is a great activity for one, your students to be creative, two, for your students to demonstrate what they know, and three, to really build community in your classroom where they can play each other's games. And it, it creates, you know, that responsibility for your students to create easy questions, but also difficult enough questions where they, you know, are challenging their students and also creating answer keys. So they make sure they are practicing as well. If you would like to download this interactive activity for your students to use, go ahead and click the button right below this video or however way you're watching it. And you can grab this exact template for you to use in your classroom right now. Again, my name is Kathy Martin, and I hope that you found these end of the year activities to be helpful. I can't wait to see how they go in your classroom and I will see you next time. Bye.